Uh, hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to continue our Amazon budget build by mounting our electronics. Now that all of our mounting plates are ready to uh, install electronics, we need to focus a little bit on connector compatibility here. So our speed controller comes with an old fashioned Tamiya sty style plug. Our battery comes with a Dean style plug and naturally these don't plug in. You can use an adapter such as this one, which will plug into your speed controller and this end into your battery. However, this adds a lot of length to your cables. So I always prefer to try and make things as nice and neat as possible. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to actually cut these off here and I'm going to solder a new one in place. So that way they'll be compatible. So now that I have the wires stripped back and you can see how little I have stripped, it's only about an eighth of an inch. You don't need very much wire when you're doing your soldering. So clamp this into our little holder here. And we're gonna tin the end of the wire. So tinning means to solder just the end of the wire itself. And the same thing on this negative one here. Now once these wires are tinned, we're gonna load on our heat shrink tubing. You always want to do this before you solder because um, if you don't, you'll have to desolder it in order to put the heat shrink back on there again. Now on the end of our Dean's plug, if you look really closely at the end here, they are marked positive and negative. And it's going to be a little difficult to see coming off of camera, but the side that my finger is pointing at is our positive side. And this one over here is our negative side. So we're going to go ahead and solder our positive wire to that connector. Now I have tinned the end of the connector. So you see there's just a little bit of solder on the end there. And we're gonna take our red cable cause that's our positive side. We're gonna hold it on the connector and then we're going to apply our heat just until things start to liquefy underneath. Remove your heat and hold it still. You wanna be working it around. You'll get a cold solder in it. And that is soldered onto our cable. So now we'll do our negative one. We're gonna tin the end of our connector just as I had already done on the positive lead. And then solder our cable. So now that that is soldered, we'll load our heat shrink up on our cable and we'll use a heat gun to shrink it down. Now we'll also need to attach our motor leads to our motor. They were not nice enough to give us a plug-in connector, so we'll need to take care of that. Now I have soldered, um, I have tinned rather the end of the wire, and I've also shortened these a little bit. Since this is gonna be about the position of the speed controller, I didn't want the wires to be too long. I've also pre-tinned the motor as well. So all we should have to do is just apply our heat and solder things in place. You'll notice I'm gonna plug these wires going backward just because I wanted to get them away from the battery if I could, but also to make sure that the wiring was nice and clean. Again, hold things still while everything sets up. You don't wanna work a cold solder into your joints. Now I have already mounted the receiver in this model and I'm gonna go ahead and mount the speed controller. I like using this um, clear tape. This clear tape is very, very strong, but it also comes up in one piece when you go to pull it. Now there's a trick that once you've applied these, you'll see what I'm doing here. I'm pulling up the corner of the double-sided tape and I'm pushing down on the tape. Well, if you do that, this will pull up in one clean piece and you don't have to fight to pull this up. This technique also works on the foam type tape as well. So just push the corner down, pull the, um, the corner and then push the tape down and you'll get a nice clean pull like that. Since we have this out, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at these jumpers. Now these jumpers here, we wanna make sure we have it positioned in the lipo side. So this bottom one closest to the outer edge of the speed controller, that will be our, um, our lipo cutoff mode. This top, jumper right here. This is our reverse type. So closest to the camera would be the forward brake and reverse. 
The furthest away from the camera would be the forward and brake, no reverse, and completely removing it will give us a crawler reverse so that we can just uh, go right from forward into reverse. So that's the way that I'm gonna set this one up. The speed controller always plugs into channel number two on your receiver, and the white wire will typically face to the longest side of the receiver. We'll pull our servo cable from the front of the vehicle. This will plug into channel number one. And of course, match the colors of our wire on our motor. Now, depending on how you've soldered this on here, you might find the system runs backward. And in which case you could just simply reverse any of the two cables on the speed controller. Um, or you could, of course, uh, disconnect it and resolder it if you like. You do want to make sure that you push these in firmly so they're nice and secure. Okay, so now that all of our electronics are installed, our battery is installed, everything is wired up and powered on, we're going to take a look at the Dumble RC remote that's here. And the uh, first impressions of this is, is that it doesn't feel all that bad. It feels pretty stable and sturdy. You have a third channel button that's right here. You have a fourth channel button that's located right here. And of course your steering and your throttle are there. On the radio you have your ST trims. On your throttle trims, this side, both these knobs are your STs uh, for your steering. Both these are for your throttles. So that would be uh, your basic setup. Now, as I mentioned before, installing this arm is not the final step in this um, in this process, uh, we're going to do that final step now, which is called centering your servo. So the first thing we're going to do is our steering trim knob. We're going to make sure that that steering trim is on zero. And then uh, we're going to get our, our wheels as straight as we can and then install our arm. Now, it's okay if they're a little bit off because the trim is there for that reason. So we're just going to get them as, as close as we can before we reinstall the arm. And again, don't tighten with these power drivers. Always hand tighten. That is for the best. And then we're going to tighten up our bolts, our cinch bolts on our servo arm. We're going to tighten one side up and we're going to tighten up the other side. We'll have to power this off though because I need to turn the steering. So turn the steering to the side here so we can get to that other screw. And as far as our installs of all of our equipment, this should be ready to drive. So we'll check our throttle first here. So pull the trigger and we have forward, push the trigger and we have reverse. Our steering is functioning. There's one last thing that we need to do though, is we need to verify the endpoint of the radio. So you have an endpoint switch down here on the bottom. So we're going to start with that at its lowest point. We're going to give it some steering and slowly ramp this up until the steering stops turning. So you see, as I turn this knob, there's no more travel in the steering. So we've reached the maximum throw of the vehicle. We don't want to adjust this too far because we'll burn up our servo. So I think at this point here, we'll end the video. And in the next one, you should see some footage of it actually running. Well, guys, as we wrap up this video, I just wanted to say thank you very much for stopping in and taking a look. And I do hope that it benefited you in some way. And if it has, do please consider giving me a thumbs up and a subscription. Also, don't forget to hit that bell, especially if you want to see the new content as it comes out. Well, that'll wrap it up for today, and I hope to see you in the next one.